I want you to know that the last time I did one of these packing for an ultra videos, I DNF'd said ultra. So, you know, you may want to ignore everything I'm about to tell you. It's February 2019 and I am packing for the Arc of Attrition 2019. The Arc of Attrition is a 100 mile race. Well, actually it's a little bit more than 100 miles, maybe 104, something like that around the southwest coast path in Cornwall. I've done it twice before. I've finished both times, both times under 30 hours. The cutoff is 36 hours. It's a gnarly old trail. I mean, it's not easily runnable in many, many parts. And 13 hours of it is total darkness. Um, you're on cliff edges. Um, it's slippery. Navigation is not too bad as long as you keep the sea on your left and you follow the little acorn signs which are the waymark signs for the southwest coast path you should be all right but it, it's still easy to go wrong especially in the dark. Also it's winter so it's going to be cold, it could be snowing, it could be raining, it's likely to be a bit windy uh, so you do need to keep protected. So here's what I've got to take with me for the Arc of Attrition 2019. There is a mandatory kit list, of course, as well, so uh, we need to keep an eye on that. Let's start with what I'm putting in my backpack. So my backpack is um, the cheap version of the Nathan backpack. So you might recognise these colours. Uh, Nathan do a really nice backpack in these colours. This is the cheaper budget version by a and e -G. Um, That's how I pronounce it anyway, a and e -G. I think that's what it is. Uh, so, and it's, it's much cheaper than the Nathan Pack and it's, it's served me very well for a good few months now. I do have the Nathan Pack, uh, but it's a bit small for me, so I've got a larger pack and I thought I'd go for this one. Whistle? There's plenty of room here. Uh, it's fine for me and it'll be fine for this uh, 100 mile journey. Then inside the pack we need to be able to carry um, one and a half litres of fluid. So I have three Salomon soft flasks here. Um, to be perfectly honest, they are okay. I have had splits in these before. Uh, they're, not, they're not brilliant. So they will go in my backpack. Um, only two of them will be filled up at a time. I'll have an empty one just in case. Also in the backpack to comply with mandatory kit list, I have uh, long waterproof montane trousers. I, I almost certainly won't be wearing them, but they've got to go in the backpack, um, so there they are. Also required is a body bag, bivy bag. So this is the smallest one I could find, and I'm pretty sure that complies with the mandatory kit list. So that is going in my backpack. But just in case that other one doesn't pass kit check, I've got this spare one which I'll be carrying down to Cornwall with me. You need to carry a fully charged mobile phone. I have my mobile phone in a waterproof sealed uh, bag, the kind of bag that you might carry your maps in as well if you have maps. I'll also be putting a tiny little compass in my backpack. Um, last year I ended up going in completely the opposite direction for some reason in the middle of the night. So um, if I have my brain and my wits about me, I will use the compass and just make sure I am going west. Never eat shredded wood. I am going in the right direction, whatever the right direction is. Batteries, so I have two, two battery packs um, for charging my phone and for charging my watch. So I've got the battery packs. I'm using a Garmin Fenix 5X, so that's the charging cable for the Fenix. And then we've got the charging cable for my iPhone. So all that is going in the backpack. Um, buffs. Um, my crew will be carrying plenty of spare dry buffs, but we have to have a buff with us, so there's a buff. And we'll also be carrying some um, tights as well. We need long tights. Again, a lot of this stuff I won't actually wear, so again, the tights I probably won't wear. But you have to remember, A, mandatory kit list, so you've got to carry it anyway, and B, the reason that it's on the mandatory kit list is if you do fall and break your leg, if something happens to you, you will get cold very quickly. You need to survive, so you need to get in your kit, get in that body bag, and stay there till help arrives. We have to have two sets of gloves, a Gore-Tex set of gloves, so these are waterproof, and I've got a, another warm set of gloves, and I actually have another kind of liner pair as well. So the liner pair, if it gets really cold at night, the liner pair will go on and then the warm gloves will go on top. The annoying thing about the Gore-Tex gloves, um, unfortunately, they do get very sweaty. These are actually seal skins. So these seal skin gloves, although they keep your hands dry from the outside wet, 
they get wet inside because you're sweating and it doesn't really seem to go anywhere. So I don't, I don't really like these very much, but I'm taking them with me. But these uh, Montaigne gloves are the ones I will wear. They are warm and even if your hands get wet, they're not waterproof. Um, even if your hands get wet, they stay warm inside these gloves. So those are my gloves, but all of those three pairs of gloves are going in the backpack. You need to carry two long sleeve base layers. So this is one base layer, it's nothing special, just a long sleeve top. And then I'm also wearing my Montaigne, long sleeve Montaigne fleece. Also in the backpack, again, complying with a mandatory kit list, I've got my uh, cup. Now there are two kinds of cups. You could get this kind of very easy, collapsible Hydra pack, um, kind of just screws up really small. Uh, I don't like that very much because you spill tea all over yourself. Uh, this is the one I will probably use. Uh, this is much harder. Um, it's still small, fits in your backpack. It, it pulls open like that. So one of those will go in my backpack, not the other one. Lights. Okay, lights is a really important one. You need two head torches and you need batteries and spare batteries for the head torches. So my main torch is going to be the Petzl Neo Plus. Um, so I have this battery pack now. You can buy a spare full one of those for about £50. Uh, but what I do, um, and I don't know if you can still get them, but I buy the spare internal battery, which looks like that. Much cheaper if you can find them. And then when you need to change a battery, you open up the back of this and you put this battery inside. So that is my main light, my Petzl Nail Plus with the spare battery. But I've also got this little Petzl light as my backup. It's very light, it's very small. It's actually not the greatest light in the world, but it passes kit check. Um, and it's operated by a CR2032 coin cell. So one of these little kind of coin cell batteries. So that is my spare backup light. But I'm also taking with me in the car with the crew, my LED lenser. So if I have a disaster with both of those lights, when I next see my crew, I have this light to fall back on. And further to that, I've also got this tiny little light here, just Again, another spare, just in case. So those lights and batteries will go in the backpack. Um, this LED lenser will go with my crew. I'm also carrying some paracetamol with me as well, so that'll go there. So that's everything I think that I'm carrying with me on my back. So now we can look at stuff I'm actually wearing on the day. Uh, so starting at the bottom, shoes. I've got my um, hooker. Evo Mafate, very comfortable, long distance trail shoes. Grip on the bottom is good. Um, these have covered a good few miles now. They did CCC with me in Chamonix and uh, they coped all right. They're a bit dirty, but I'm, I very rarely wash my trail shoes. So I've got those. I've also got my Speed Goat 2s, which I'll wear if I feel I need to change into anything. As far as socks go, I'll be taking in Gingies. So I've got mid-weight, quite thick, warm in Gingy toe socks. I've been wearing these for a number of years now and I do like them. So I'll be wearing one pair and I'll have another pair and some of the sundry socks in the bag in the car with my crew. So next up is shorts. I'm quite a fan of Kalenji. Uh, you get them from Decathlon. They're, they're, they're pretty tight fitting. Um, they may leave very little to the imagination, but they are comfortable. So uh, there's shorts and I'll have a few pairs of those in the bag with the crew and wearing one pair. Underwear. Do not underestimate the value of good underwear. Um, as long as you've got your Vaseline on. For many years I've worn ex-bionic underwear so I'll take those with me but I'm actually going to wear my newish Runderwear underwear. So I've got those. On top, I'm going to be wearing my X-Bionic tops. I've been wearing X-Bionic for years now. I find them really comfortable. I like the fact that they're tight fitting. They don't move about, so there's not a lot of friction, so you don't get chafing as much as you might with other tops. So I've got various uh, X-Bionic tops there that I'm going to wear. And on top of that, I'm probably going to wear my Montaigne fleece. So there'll be my X-Bionic top, my Montaigne fleece and then my OMM jacket on the top. So three layers for most of the race, unless I get hot during the day when I will take the, the fleece off. But generally I'll be wearing all three layers throughout the whole race. So this is my OMM waterproof jacket, um, a hood with a peak cap. 
on the kit list you need a waterproof hat now my hat isn't waterproof but as long as you've got a hood on your jacket with a peak cap then you're all right so my waterproof jacket passes kit check uh, hats so um, I'm wearing uh, these Carrymore beanies I've got um, a couple of these so I'll wear one keep one in the bag in the car um, and swap over when they get wet. I've also got a, a waterproof cap that I could wear if I wanted to, but generally these beanies will keep my head nice and warm. So that's it for everything that I'm going to wear. So other stuff that I am going to take with me and have in the bag, in the car, to use if I need it. First up, poles. These are my lecky lightweight poles. Um, I've used them an awful lot in lots of different races, Transvolcania and CCC in particular, and I did use them for one section of the Arc of Attrition last year, and I think I found them helpful, so I may well use them again this year. So, poles. <laughs> I don't think I shall be using these, but there is talk of snow. I don't think I will be wearing my snow grips, but I'm bringing them just in case. They will be in the car, in the bag in case I need them. At the beginning of the race and possibly during the race I will be smothering myself in Vaseline. You can use this kind of anti-friction cream as well but I tend to find that Vaseline does a perfectly good job um, and I, I, you know, I put it in all the usual places that you might. Let's move on. So nutrition. In my flasks I will have water and possibly coke or red bull or you know that purdy's stuff i quite like that purdy's so i might have that i do like my coffee so i will have plenty of these iced lattes in the car and every time i see my crew i'll grab one of these and then um fuel is my main nutrition so this i mix with full fat milk i think you're supposed to mix it with water because it's kind of vegan friendly it is a full meal in a drink i will have that Again, almost every stop I'll have a, a drink of Huel. It's difficult to carry it with you in flasks because it, it doesn't mix up very well. It, it's a bit gritty, um, so I wouldn't put it in a flask. There are only four aid stations in the whole Arc of Attrition 100 mile race, but they are very well stocked with food. If I do need something a bit more substantial than just my Huel drink, which no doubt I will. Um, there's plenty of soup, pasta, pizzas, sandwiches, all sorts of things that you could want at the aid station, so I will certainly take advantage of that. I'll have a full set of clothes to change into at the end of the race, so that'll all be in the car as well. So I think that's everything. If I've missed something out, do let me know in the comments, but everything I'm carrying in my backpack, everything I'm wearing, and everything that'll be in my bag in the car, um, which I can get whenever I see my crew. I think that is it. So thanks for watching guys. Um, if you've got an ultra coming up, good luck with it. I hope your packing goes well. I hope you don't forget anything and uh, take care. We'll see you next time. Don't forget, please subscribe to the Phil Myra on YouTube channel. Click that little bell icon down there. You know all the usual gubbins. Take care, see you soon, bye-bye.